Welcome to episode number 14 of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I'm your host, Bo Bullock. On this week's episode, I'm going to talk to you about relaying NTLM v1 and v2 hashes on a Windows network. Uh, now, NTLM relaying is nothing new. It's, it's an attack that's been around for a while, um, but it's something that I think is very important and that I think is a really awesome attack that every pen tester should know how to do. Um, basically, if you're an attacker on a network <clears throat> and you can poison traffic, certain, certain protocols, you can actually uh, execute code under the context of certain users that are poison on, on that network on other systems on the network. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick background about how you would actually get to the point where you could do NTLM relaying in the first place. Um, so a quick LL, LLMNR and NBTNS overview here. Um, so LLMNR and NBTNS are essentially the backups for DNS on a network, um, on a Windows host. So they're on by default on pretty much every Windows host uh, around. And essentially what happens is whenever your host starts requesting a DNS host name, um, so you type in google.com, it's gonna you know, start asking your DNS server and then recursively ask the internet, where's Google, where's Google, where's Google. If, if it can't find google.com for some reason, um, the DNS server will come back to your host and say, oh, I don't have any entry for that. Your local host will then result, resort to using LLMNR or NBTNS, depending on which OS, uh, which Windows version you're using, um, to try to locate that DNS host name on the local subnet that your host is on. So um, if you type in something crazy that doesn't exist, your host will eventually get to the point where it's asking every host on your local subnet, hey, are you this host? Hey, are you this host? Hey, are you this host? And if you're an attacker and you can sit on that network and, and see that traffic and you get requested, hey, are, are you this host? I can poison that answer and say, yes, I am that host, connect to me. So um, I, like, I love this diagram here because I think it really d describes this whole process really well. So this is from Stern Security. So essentially you have the victim in step one here. They're trying to connect to the print server. So they, uh, they basically uh, typed in a network file share of slash slash pint server. They mistyped it. Um, you know, everyone makes mistakes, right? Pint server. Um, so that they essentially type that in. The DNS starts uh, to look up and, and the DNS server says, you know, I don't have an entry for pint server. Sorry. Um, so now LLMNR and, and MBTNS will say, all right, anyone on my local subnet, are you pint server? Are you pint server? Are you pint server? And if I'm an attacker sitting on the subnet and I get that request saying, are you pint server? I can say, yes, I am pint server. Connect to me. I'm the host you're looking for. And when that happens, uh, the, the, uh, the victim will actually pass a, a, an SMB or a NTLM V1 or V2 hash, hash over SMB to my attacking box um, because it's trying to authenticate to me. Um, and when that happens, I can have the password hash. And, and so traditionally, um, you have, you know, a lot of attackers just do the typical responder attack where they're just obtaining the password hash. That's, that's really cool because then you could go, you know, offline and crack it. But something that is actually a little bit cooler, in my opinion, is that you can take that 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 session that's being uh, authenticated to you and actually pass it to another host and relay that to actually execute code on another system on the network. Um, so how that kind of works is basically um, you can't you can't just take an NTLM hash that you've obtained with a responder and use it on another host. It doesn't work like that because there is a challenge of response that has to happen between the server and the client. So whenever the client connects to you, you are essentially that server and you would have to you know, you could go take that hash offline and crack it. But if you specify the, the host you want to relay to, you can actually pass that whole challenge and response back and forth and authenticate to a server that you want to actually run code on. So instead of just obtaining password hashes, we can actually execute code. So we can run a payload on another system. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that it is running in the context of that user. So if that user is not an admin of the system, they might not be able to do too much. Um, the other thing to kind of keep in mind too is that this can be done from like a non-domain system. You don't have to be on the domain. Um, you know, a lot of times we land on Windows boxes uh, with like phishing and whatnot. Um, but if you're if you are uh, just like you know with with standard Linux box connects to a network, you can run this attack without even being on the domain. Um, the other thing to keep in mind too is the victim server that you're trying to relay to has to have SMB signing disabled. Now, um, this is that finding you probably see in Nessus scans quite a bit um, that, you know, I mean, it's like, hey, SMB signing, what's the problem with that? Why, why does that matter to me? Well, this is why it matters because if SMB signing is disabled, then you can actually relay that, that challenge or response from the client to the server. If SMB signing is enabled, this attack fails. Um, so keep that in mind. So um, in order to locate hosts on a network, um, you can use something like Nmap. Um, there's an NSC script for it. I'll put a link in the in the show notes below. Um, but you know you can you can typically I mean typically any any Windows host that's not a server 
has SMB signing disabled by default. And actually in setting some of my, my testing up here, um, you know, like I, I've actually ran across articles where they recommend disabling SMB signing on servers because of because of uh, speed issues. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty likely you're gonna find a lot of systems on a network that you're testing that have SMB signing disabled. Um, so there's a, there's a few tools you can use to actually uh, perform this attack. So Responder is probably one of the more popular ones. Um, and that's the one I mentioned earlier where you can obtain password hashes using just this, the typical uh, LLM and RNBTNS uh, uh, poisoning attack. Um, but there, there is a multi-relay script that you can use in, in, a, in a combo with the uh, with Responder to do this attack. Um, same thing for Impacket's SMB Relay X. Uh, Metasploit has a module uh, called SMB Relay. And then there's PowerShell. Um, and that's that's the one I wanted to focus on on this episode because, um, you know, a lot of, I've seen plenty of demos of, of people using, you know, Responder to get hashes, you know, do, do relaying, um, which is great. But a lot of times when we're doing pen tests, we land on a Windows box. Um, and the Windows box, uh, instead of, you know, installing Python and whatnot to, to run Responder and that kind of thing, let's just use the built-in tool. Let's use PowerShell. And Kevin Robertson wrote an awesome, awesome uh, responding tool called Inve um, that will do this, that will do the, the obtaining of password hashes. It will also do relaying. So um, I'm going to do a quick demo of that to kind of show it. So let's go to the Ingve demo. All right, so um, to give you a quick uh, idea of what's going on here, I've got a Windows 7 host, uh, Windows 10 host. The Windows 7 host is gonna be our victim. So this is gonna be um, our, our admin in the sense that we don't have a credential for. My Windows 10 host is the, the host that I'm gonna be using to perform my Inve attack against the network. Um, I've got a Metasploit handler set up. Um, as well. So what the goal here is going to be is I'm going to try to get a session on a system that I don't have access to currently. So I've got access to this Windows 10 box. I don't have access to this box at, at 88.243. Um, I also don't have access to another box at uh, 88.250. In this case, I am at 88.246. Uh, so, all right, let's go ahead and uh, import the Inve PowerShell script. So I've downloaded it from GitHub. I've extracted the, uh, the the zip file. Let's go ahead and run PowerShell. Um, we're going to import module inve.psd1. And let's go ahead and uh, let's just get get some hashes first, right? So let's do the, the typical uh, quote unquote responder hash. So if we do um, console output yes, dash nbns yes, Inve is going to start running. Now, what we can do is go back over to our victim here and perform the steps that I mentioned earlier. So, like, let's try a pint server and see what happens. So, there it is. There's a hash. So, uh, Inve saw that LLM or that uh, that that request that LLM and R request for pint server. Um, and we, and this, this host responded to it and said, Hey, connect to me. And, and in this case, we got that, that admin users password hash just simply by them connecting to us. So now let's kill that. Stop NV. And let's clear, oh, clear the screen. Let's cancel. All right, now let's go ahead and do the relaying attack this time. So let me um, let me close this out. So now um, to start, you can run Inve again. Um, this time we're going to turn the HTTP listener off. NBNS, yes. Um, we're going to show help no and status output no. And then uh, the next thing we're going to do is run this invoke relay command. So um, invoke Inve relay. Um, so this is basically like the the second half of what you would you would typically do on the the standard kind of responder relay attack. So like if you were using responder, you would run responder and then run like multi relay or run responder run SMB relay. In this case, we're running inve and then we're running inve relay. Um, and then the, you have the console output uh, yes because we want to see what's going on here. We're gonna pass it our target. In this case, our target is at 88.250. Um, and then we need a command. And so in this case, this is a uh, payload that I generated with Veil. Um, it's PowerShell payload. And essentially what it is is a interpreter reverse HTTPS out to my, my C2 server here. 
So let's go ahead and pass that in here. And then we're gonna run that. So now, whenever we get that relay, or whenever we get that request, that LLM and R request, um, we're gonna respond to it and say, hey, connect to me. But we're also gonna pass that challenger response back and forth between the, the actual victim server that we want to, to actually get a shell on. So let's try this again. So now let's open up here. Let's just go somewhere random, right? We're gonna get a request. You can see grabbing challenge relay, it's relaying it. Now it's relaying it to 250. Authentication was successful. Um, and then it's it tries to actually execute my command on the server. So let's go back to our C2 server now and see if we can see anything come through here. Now let's go, is it, is it through? Trying to ex execute SMB relay. Let's see what happens if it uh, if it actually uh, is successful and not. So you can see here it says, you know, dvader, my dvader user is a local admin on that system. Um, yep, all right, so it looks like it's probably done and there's our session. So there it is. So we successfully relayed um, a, a, an authentication a session from a user on the network who just mistyped something to another system on the network and, and actually executed a payload to establish a full-on interpreter session on that host. So that is it for this edition of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Um, if you know, for the blue team, you're going to want to enable SMB signing on, on everything, right? I mean, it's, there's really no reason besides, I mean, that I've seen other than like potentially like slowing down network file shares. But you know what? Security. Yeah. <laughs> um, then uh, disabling LLM and MBTNS if possible. That might cause some issues depending on your network setup. So do some research before you start just enabling and disabling stuff. But um, you know, if you have if you have hosts on your network that can't be resolved, um, that I mean, that, I mean, te technically DNS should be doing it for you. So. Um, LLMNR and MBTNS on the local network probably aren't needed that much. Um, but again, research it. Uh, use a script to make, uh, you, could, you could do this. You could use a script to make those NBNS and LLMNR requests um, for non-existent host names. And then if one returns, then you know somebody's probably spoofing it on the network. So you might be able to actually just script out to, to kind of detect when somebody's running like Responder or something like this on your network. Um, additional resources. So ByteBleeder uh, wrote a great, great blog post, uh, more, a very up-to-date post on all this stuff. Um, and so I, I highly recommend if you want to check out this specific attack in, in more detail, check out his blog post, which I've got a link there at the bottom. Um, there's, there's another SANS blog post from 2013. Like I said, this is not a new attack, um, but it's something that I think is something that most people should know about. Um, and then I'm gonna include a bunch of links for all the different tools and uh, some other resources in the show notes below. Thank you so much for watching um, and uh, have a great weekend.